DVDs for the day. What do you look for in a good horror movie? Well, I, there's, there's one thing. Um, and normally, you know, in real life, the combination of hot girls and blood means I'm not having sex for a week. However, oh. in a, oh, no, it it's true. But in, but in horror films, you can combine those things, and it's, it's like a treat. Oh. I'm, I'm, being, I'm being honest. Well, Someone... now we know a little bit more about you. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay. Uh, what do you have for us this Halloween week? We have the Halloween 30th Anniversary Edition. Yeah. All right. Now, is this, uh, is this a collection for the casual fan of the Halloween films, or do you have to be a diehard fan to love this film? I, I gotta be honest, it's really for diehard fans because, uh, you know, for me, the first movie, that's it. The mm -hmm. first movie um, uh, is the best of all. It kind of set, set in stone what makes a good slasher film. I mean, it's yeah. scary, there's nudity, PJ Souls, no one remembers her, but I do, um, who's also nude in stripes. Nice. Uh, with Bill Murray, but this is, I mean, that first movie is incredibly scary, and it's downhill oh. from there. Look at him, he's coming after So, uh, yeah. Hey, good morning. I can tell from the look on your face that you're relieved I'm alive. As if you were dreaming that I'd been shot and continued that dream for some time. Say, an entire season of the show. Or at the very least, the time it takes to do around the net. Well, don't worry, Padmere. Chris Gore is here, and he's here to stay. And it would appear that attack of the show has just jumped the shot. Similarly to a season finale of the long-running primetime soap opera, Dallas. Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre with Jack Black, of course, uh, came out last summer. Um, you know, for those that saw, if you're a Jack Black fan, this film is kind of funny on DVD. Of course, he's a, a priest uh, who turns into a Mexican wrestler mm -hmm. so he can save the orphans. Um, as a, as a follow-up, though, to Napoleon Dynamite from Jared Hess, I really expected it to be smarter. I mean, the, the humor here is lowbrow, and believe me, I'm a big fan of lowbrow humor. Sure. Farts. I love farts. <laughs> Anything involving gaseous expulsions, funny. But um, in this, it's just a little too much where it almost feels like a, a movie for kids, like a movie Disney might have made in the 70s with Kurt Russell. Sure. You I, know? And I you know what? Thinking that Jack Black is in this, I would expect it to be a little bit edgier and a little bit darker. It's definitely not a buy, but we're renting. Reservoir Dogs, the 15th anniversary edition. I didn't realize 15-year anniversary was a big deal, but look. It's you, huge. It's, it, another, it's another pressing of the DVD to make uh, more money, yeah, right? Another reason to <laughs> double dip uh, with Reservoir Dogs. But, but look, I mean, this is you know, a cla now a classic film. Of course. You know, uh, he was from Quentin Tarantino, Class of 92, Sundance Film Festival. This movie changed everything. It changed independent film, put the Sundance Film Festival on the map, uh, launched a whole new generation of filmmakers. And that and was 15 years ago. 15 so what, years ago. what have they managed to scrounge up for this DVD now 15 well, years later? Here's, here's what it's great. I mean, I actually have another edition of this DVD, of course, when they did the Mr. Brown, the Mr. Orange, the right. Mr. White, you know, these versions. I got my one with Quentin. The World According to Sesame Street. This, yeah, this is, this is a film, that, it's a documentary about, of course, the, how PBS takes the Sesame Street franchise and makes versions all over the world, sure. you know, in South America and whatnot. And what's interesting is that they have different characters that they'll come up with, right. you know. And, and in Africa, one of the uh, Sesame Street characters, they have a character that has AIDS. Right. And whose mother was dead, and uh, I think the puppet was named Cammy or something. Yeah, Olivia is actually that... infected when we air in Australia. It's weird how we just we switch it up to keep it local. But it's interesting to see how they localize, and they say, well, this doesn't work for this market, and they completely change it all together.